Here we are at Blade Show 2018 with the Brad Souther, the man, the myth, the legend. And legend. Brad, tell us a little about yourself. How long have you been making knives? I've been making knives now for about 10 years, um, as, as a source of income at least. I, my first knife was made around 12 years ago when I was in college. I started making my own. And then in college I started making knives just kind of for fun. Um, and started paying for college on the by making knives on the weekends, and that was about 10 years ago. All um, right, now you've had a sea change before. The Positron, the Southern, were made by Spyderco. Yes. And now you're moving things in shop. How has that changed your world? Uh, well, for, for a few years, I've even made some of my own, uh, what I call performance series, um, knives that are, they're made partially in-house and highly tuned by me, but might have used other outside sources. Um, and with companies like Spyderco, it's definitely true. But I was definitely having some frustrations involved with with making knives that were where some of the components were being provided or made by other people, and I couldn't 100% control everything. I'm um, I'm very much a control freak. I like to have everything just so. Um, control freak might be the wrong term. It's mostly an attention to detail that I really want everything exactly how I want it. Um, so bringing everything in house, uh, like I just have with my mini tolk, which is the first knife that I've had that is fully made in my shop, um, is fantastic. It's also incredibly stressful. Um, it's it's added it's added an enormous amount of stress and frustration, but it's a different kind of stress and frustration. My stress and frustration in the past has been about what other people were doing. Um, and my disappointments and, and unhappiness with what they were providing to me. Um, now my frustration is definitely more about how to actually craft the product I'm making and how to perfect it and get the exact finish I want, which takes a lot more time and it's a different kind of stress. Um, but it's a stress I enjoy much more because I'm learning new things and gaining new skill sets in the process. That is so good. Thank you so much for taking it in-house. The quality of the mini talk is just wonderful. I'm going to scan down now and take one of the mini tokes and explain it to us. Show us the mini talk. Well, let me show you one of the base models. So if you order a mini talk on my website and you choose all of the default settings, you don't touch any of the radio buttons, any of the other things, this is what you would get right here. Um, bead, um, like a... Um, trying to remember what I call this on the website, I'm sorry. Um, soft blast titanium finish, tumbled, uh, tumbled blade with either um, a copper or brass backspacer, matching pivot ring to match that, and then titanium hardware all around with a CP, or sorry, a 20 CV blade. Um, that's the base model. The, the, the kind of things you're going to see on there. Um, it's also got ball bearings that I make in-house. Um, large diameter for the most possible lateral support that I can possibly get out of the knife. So it's a very strong, stable, um, just awesome functioning smooth knife. Um, there's a uh, lock insert so that should you ever somehow actually wear out the knife, I can easily replace the lock insert. Um, as well as it uh, functions as an over travel stop. If you look, I don't know if this will show up on camera, but if you look right there, you can kind of see a little glint of metal come through that functions as an over travel stop so that you can't hyper extend your lock and uh, cause problems long term. Um, but with that as your base model, there's a lot of choices you can do beyond that. And I don't have some of the highest end fancy ones because I do offer this in fully Timascus and Damasteel. But you can also choose from different inlay materials. So um, different inlay materials, there's different blade materials. So if for, perhaps you don't like 20 CV, you can use PSF 27, S110V, RWL 34, M4. I'm a steel junkie and I like to support other people's steel junkie habits by offering way too many options. Um, so this one, for example, is Koa, also a 20, I'm sorry, uh, PSF 27 blade, brass back spacer. Um, yeah, there's a lot of different options and of course different colors as well. We've got the different colors that can be anodized. That was a weird way to flip the knife. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, tell us the different options for backspacers. We'll start with that. Sure. I don't know exactly if I've got all of them here. Let's see if uh, let's see if I can actually create a nice little nice little thing to show some of them off. 
Okay, so there I've got three options here. So the, the two that you can choose from as the default, don't cost any extra, it's included in the original price, is copper or brass. I'm sorry, bronze. Copper or bronze. Um, and then you can upgrade to a zirconium backspacer like you see here. And just like before, with if you, whatever backspacer you buy, you'll get a matching pivot ring just so that um, it continues the theme a little bit and kind of, I don't know, I just like the way it works. Um, and then you can also get titanium, which I don't have any out here on the table apparently. All my titanium backspacers appear to have sold. That's okay. Um, Tell us what kind of inlays you can do besides wood and just raw titanium. Uh, well, I've sold out of all of the ones I currently have, um, but Koa is one of the ones I offer. I, I also have a bog oak. So this is um, ancient bog oak. It was pulled out of a bog in um, like a swamp in Russia and has been carbon dated to 3,400 years old. Um, and it just looks awesome. If you're an oak fan, um, or just a wood fan in general, you can even see the ray and the ray and flecking that happens to oak um, in the material. And it's, but it's black because it's been slow rotting in tundra temperatures for apparently 3,400 years, which is awesome. So I've got bog oak. I also offer cocobolo. Um, let's see. I have cocobolo. There's inlay materials like. Um, oh, I'm not even thinking about the one that's sitting here. Green micarta. Um, I'm trying to think what else I've offered. I, oh, carbon fiber. There you go. One of the coolest ones. So there's a lot of backspacers, a lot of inlays, and a lot of anodizing colors. Mm -hmm. Brad, thank you so much for making the mini token. Thank you for the interview. Thank you.